welcome to Dave's Hammer Soul. And in this soul, uh, every week we, I invite new guests to discuss about uh, some issues which are affecting indigenous peoples. And this week also we have a new guest from Canada. She comes from a um, US-based organization called Cultural Survival. Her name is Angelica Rao. And uh, she will introduce herself uh, about herself. So uh, first I would like to welcome you in our cell, in my cell. Thank you very much for having me here. Right, so since you have just arrived here in Nepal and in our television, and I would like you to introduce yourself in detail, what you do and where you are involved with. Um, so my name is Merunam Angelica Ho. Um, I'm Canadian, uh, but I work for a US-based organization. Um, we're called Cultural Survival. Um, so, Cultural Survival is an advocacy organization that advocates for Indigenous people's rights. Um, it's been in existence since 1972. It was founded by a Harvard professor who was working with Indigenous peoples uh, in the Brazilian Amazon. And um, since then, the organization has evolved quite a bit and changed very much. Um, and now we have a very international staff. Uh, we have staff members in uh, Guatemala, uh, Canada, the US, Nicaragua, Nepal, and South Africa. Um, and I particularly work with uh, the organization's community media program, which um, works with indigenous community radio stations more than any other media. media. Um, working with those radio stations on capacity building and training, um, we believe very much that the radio is a, a crucial tool for indigenous peoples to be able to have their own um, their own media in their own languages, about their own cultures, about issues that are of importance to them. Ah, interesting that you said cultural survival works with community radios. Yes. Right? Yes. So that means you are here to work with community radios as well, right? Yes. So um, thanks to our new community media grants program, um, we've had the opportunity to start doing small, small funding for local community radio projects. Um, so we are here on behalf of their five different projects that are taking place in Nepal. Uh, one was the Women's Empowerment in Community Radio project. Um, so we were here and we had a five-day workshop that was uh, coordinated and organized by uh, Dev Kumar Sunuar and Jagat Dong of the Indigenous Media Network and um, Radio Kairan, one of the Indigenous community radio stations here in Nepal and, and it was funded by Cultural Survival and our partners the World Association of Christian Communication, the WAC. Okay, that means in our informal meeting you said that Cultural Survival first focused in Latin America states, right? One day. Yes. You know, how, what is the reason behind that you scaled up your program into the Asia? Yes. It is your first time, I mean not your visit, but you know, Cultural Survival's approach to Asia, right? Yes, exactly. So. Um, through our community media program, um, we've mostly been working in Central America. Uh, the program was founded in Guatemala, uh, in Central America, and it was founded um, based on the premise of um, supporting those indigenous community radios that did not have legal access to um, frequencies. And so Guatemala has a long history of colonization and discrimination and marginalization of indigenous peoples. And um, indigenous communities all around the country were starting local community radio stations um, as a way of empowering their communities, it's starting community movements, um, getting uh, communities educated about issues that were of interest to them, having media in their own languages as well. Um, and the government saw this as a big threat, right? So they did everything that they could to keep those radios from, from uh, successfully uh, functioning so there's no access to frequencies and there were um, raids actually on the radio stations um, so the the police would come raid all of the equipment um, and this is something that's still happening today um, police would come raid all the equipment in some cases put the volunteers who are working at the radio in jail whoever is present at the time of the raid so our work started there as a lobbying uh, support and uh, with that we ended up doing um, training so capacity building with the radios 
learning from them what it is that they wanted, what it is that they needed to learn about, what it is that they were interested in learning about. So those those capacity buildings involved like technical training and then like political and educational kinds of training, you know, learning about different issues and how to present those on the radio, journalism training. Um, and then there is the issue of, of network building, so working with, with different radios from different parts of the country. Um, lots of work in Guatemala, and then from there, that work slowly expanded to other parts of Central America. And uh, what then, so, so this new initiative, the Community Media Grants Program, has, in, it has given us the capacity to expand our work outside of the regions where we have um, most experience. And our understanding is, you know, in Nepal specifically, is a country very, a very rich in diversity, um, many, many different indigenous groups, and as, as I've learned, is a, actually a model country for indigenous community radios. So there are many community radios that are functioning and doing an amazing job, but that lack, um, you know, technical capacity or, or equipment or certain types of training. Um, we came to understand that um, although there are a plenty of indigenous community radio stations, there's a lack of women's participation. Um, so through our connection with you, Dev, um, we were able to come and have someone on the ground who is knowledgeable um, and has the connections necessary and the, and the capacity to bring this program that is very well established in Central America to, to Nepal. So we're just kind of in the beginning phases of that right now. Um, but we're really happy about how everything is going so far. From your conversation, uh, it is clear that community radio can play a lot of role, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, besides raising awareness mm -hmm. or how community radios can empower the communities, Right? Can mm -hmm. they be a friend of a community? Mm -hmm. Can Nepal's community radios also take an example of other countries' mm -hmm. practice mm -hmm. or good models in Nepal? Yeah. Well, I think um, the most important um, aspect of any community radio is that it is coming from the community. So, just the fact that it is located in a community doesn't make it a community radio. It has to be responding to the needs of that community. So, I think. Um, a good community radio is one that is always interacting with different sectors of the community. You know, all of the different sectors have a space that they're a space where they are able to participate in the radio in some way or have their voices heard, whether that be through their own program or just through like phoning in and saying, I want to hear this or having people on the radio go and reach out to the community members. So I think that. Um, yeah, and the cultural survival is using these tools, the community radio, yeah. right, oh, yeah. to, so to what... help survive the indigenous people's yes. culture, yeah. oh, culture yeah. around the world, right? Okay. Okay, how does it do it? How does it use community radios to uh, yes. you know, help communities' culture survive? Mm -hmm. um, so, cultural survival, uh, apart from our community media program, we also have a program called Indigenous Rights Radio, and uh, we have thousands of programs um, in 35 languages. Um, that are distributed to 1,674 radios in 55 countries around the world. So that, uh, that program is uh, a program of uh, radio production on indi different indigenous people's rights. Um, so through the program we have interviews at international forum with different indigenous leaders. Um, and essentially the idea behind the program is um, informing indigenous communities about what their rights are and then how to implement those rights. So there are lots of interviews with community leaders who are who are currently facing um, international interventions in their community that are that are um, infringing upon the rights of the community. And then you know, in discussing these uh, issues that are happening in other communities, it can empower local communities to um, to confront similar issues, um, as well the use of language, so um, one of the most important aspects of community radio is that it's in the language of the indigenous community uh, that it represents. So we have uh, programming that it's been translated into 35 different languages, both indigenous languages and not. Um, 
And so this is using the power of uh, language to bring education, uh, educational materials into a community. So um, in many rural communities all across the world, there are sometimes high levels of illiteracy or a lack of or a lack of access to, to certain media like television or, or printed publications. And the radio is the, the medium that arrives at the communities, right? So if you have radio programming that is educational, that is informative, um, that is addressing relevant issues in the languages of the communities, that's going to be able to act, um, that's going to be able to arrive at, you know, people who are working in the fields, women who are, you know, at home working in the kitchen, you know, so it's a very accessible medium. Um, so the idea is using this medium that is accessible to most people and then using it in a way that is going to be informative, educational, relevant for the communities. Um, I visited uh, the website of Cultural Survival as well, and it publishes the quarterly magazines mm -hmm. and uh, it carries out a lot of uh, indigenous people's issues as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, in relation to community radio programs or uh, community grant program, you have visited uh, some of the countries in the grassroots as well. Guatemala, mm -hmm. you said, Bolivia mm -hmm. and Nicaragua, you said, mm -hmm. and you have come to Nepal. Mm -hmm. And what are the challenges that you have observed that indigenous peoples are facing mm -hmm. in these countries? What is the major challenge that you think they are facing, right? I think there are a few things. There, there are lots of similarities across uh, international borders. I think... Um, the most striking similarity is um, international corporations and and national governments um, not respecting the rights of the indigenous peoples. This is something that I've seen everywhere that I've visited and worked in, in with regards to indigenous communities. So indigenous peoples are the you know the original owners or habitants of the land and this is often something that is not respected by the capitalist uh, companies and and governments. So um, all over the world you see indigenous people slowly losing access to their land and without the um, without any consultation, right? So this is something that I've seen everywhere. A good example that you have brought in Nepal are also the private entities like World yeah. Bank, yes. Asian Development Banks, they have been funding to Nepal government and or private individuals and they are producing hydropowers. Mm. And, and uh, the hydropower dams obviously it has helped development mm. of Nepal mm. uh, in one sense, but on the other hand, mm -hmm. it has violated the indigenous people's right. Yeah. But uh, perhaps in Guatemala, in Bolivia, they have different, maybe I have heard a lot of extractive industries, they, they, yes. they have that one. Yeah. That is violating of their rights, right? Yes. Extractive okay. industries as well as hydroelectric dams. How are they fighting against, uh, how, you know, yeah. you have visited yes. these countries and you have seen indigenous movement mm -hmm. in these countries as well. Yeah. Could you tell us that, you know, how successfully they are fighting against these sort of challenges in these countries so that Nepalese mm -hmm. people in Nepal also can learn something? Um, so, in Guatemala there is quite a bit of um, hydroelectric dam projects, mining projects, that are gravely infringing on the indigenous people's uh, rights. So, it's hard to think of, an, of, a, of a very successful um, movement against these corporations, there are there is a lot of community movement because uh, community movements because in Guatemala, like when there is a hydroelectric dam and it dries a river of a community, that's their access to the water that they need to to survive. It's the livelihoods of the of the fishermen, it, it, whatever it may be, right? So the communities are quite active in coming together, um, taking to the streets and fighting against these corporations. Unfortunately, like it gets to the fact it gets to the point where the corporations are um, often murdering um, people who who speak out, right? They're murdering the leaders of these movements. Um, we've seen this in Honduras with Berta Cáceres, who is the a community leader against a uh, dam project in Ria Rio I'm not remembering the name right now, but she was murdered last year, just over a year ago. Um, and in um, and in Barrias in Guatemala, 
uh, community leaders have gone missing. Um, so community radio has been a really active tool in bringing the communities together to fight uh, these entities and it's also been a really important tool in um, bringing to the public knowledge um, the crimes against the human rights defenders uh, and the lands right, land rights defenders. Um, but our role often is bringing those um, issues to the international scale because sometimes you need people internationally to recognize what is happening in order to bring more attention to the issue because often when it's in a local community it just is the issue is silenced at the international level and these things continue. Um, actually in Barrias uh, the dam project was the the license was um, it wasn't entirely revoked but it was suspended for the time being so this is like a, a temporary success in that community and that came from years and years of fighting and taking to the streets, using community media, making connections internationally to bring those issues to um, international allies and things like that. Uh, that means, okay, the, in the background. Or earlier you said that cultural survival has been working for 45 years in the sector of indigenous peoples. Mm -hmm. And uh, how can Nepalese indigenous peoples partner with cultural survival? Mm -hmm. Or how can cultural survival can partner with Nepal? Yeah. Yeah. Indigenous peoples. So, um, as an international indigenous rights organization, I think that our biggest strength is is playing a supportive role to communities. So, not being the protagonist in a, an initiative, but rather supporting the ideas that come from the community. Right. So the the community media grants program is is very, um, it's a very important program because it recognizes that the the ideas must come from the communities. So these are projects that have been developed by the communities and then we um, are able to, through our kind of really dynamic and inclusive um, application process, work with those communities to develop the ideas and make it something that that um, that can be, that can, that can be uh, implemented, right? So I think our role is to be an ally and I think that that means listening to the needs of the community, being present and, um, and critical in our, in our approach, you know, um, having, having people on the ground that work with us that we trust and being a trusted um, ally to those people as well. So having ongoing like strong kinds of connections, I think um, the the real change is always going to be made at the grassroots level, um, but as an international entity, we have the uh, we have the capacity to support those grassroots level projects. So uh, to conclude, if you have anything else that to add on, I would just like to say thank you <laughs> um, very much to all of the people that I've met uh, this past nine days that I've been in Nepal so far. Uh, we had a workshop, five-day workshop with 30 women uh, from around the country from 11 different indigenous groups um, and then a, a second two-day workshop with uh, leaders from the community radios and, and women participants at those radios and um, I've been overwhelmed by the hospitality and the kindness of everyone that I've met so far. Um, it's been really lovely and it's enabled me to really um, be as, as productive as I can in this, in this um, context. I think coming to a place and not speaking the language is often very difficult, but I had a translator helping me and I was able to um, have really, really, you know, uh, deep and profound conversations my um, translator but also because of the warmth and the kindness of the people that I was speaking with so I would just like to acknowledge um, that and and say how grateful I am to be able to be here and working with the uh, wonderful and inspiring different community radio projects. Thank you so much Angelica Rao for giving us your valuable time. Thank you. And today we had a uh, a guest from Canada. Her name is Angelica Rao. Next mm -hmm. week we'll, I will come with new guests.